Becoming great means much more than opportunities and hard work. We're exploring places of meeting. Watch out, they don't speak the truth. All of this and more coming up next on Bible Discovery TV Quick Study Weekend Edition. Stay there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. I'm Corey. And I'm Ryan. And this is Quick Study Bible Discovery TV. Thank you for joining us as we go through the Bible in one year. Now, here's what that means. Today, we are going to study in the book of Judges. And that's a pretty intense book, by the way. Judges chapter 10, verses 1 to 14 is our specific reading in the Power Guide. You know, becoming great means much, much more than good opportunities and hard work will discuss character. All of that and more coming up in just a moment. Corey? Today we are going to be looking into the archaeology and history of two very interesting sites, Shechem and Mizpah. Excellent. And Ryan is here again with Cosmic Mysteries. Well, today we're taking a bit of a look at some of the alleged messages these ETs have been giving their contacts over the years. Interestingly, these ETs seem to always be just out of our grasp. More on that later. Just so close, but not quite there. That and more coming up. First, here's Corey. You better get ready for Bible Archaeology and History. period that the book of Judges records was a very shameful time for later Israelites looking back. It's recorded not to exult in poor behavior, but actually the exact opposite, to look at this time with regret, with sorrow, and to attempt to never allow this to happen again. Um, there are also a lot of people and places mentioned within the book of Judges, and these places are often very important later on in history. Let's look at one of them now. The city of Shechem lies 30 miles north of Jerusalem in the hill country of Ephraim. Its name Shechem literally means mountain shoulder as it was built on the slope of Mount Ebal. Shechem is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis chapter 12. It is here that God promised Abram that the land of Canaan would be given to Abram's descendants. And it is here that Israel as they were moving into this promised land, came to make their oaths to follow God and renewed their covenant with him. Abram had built an altar by a landmark oak tree at Shechem. And as Israel moved into the promised land, another altar was built by Joshua, their leader. The nation gathered at Shechem and watched as Joshua wrote the words of the law of God on large plastered stones and stood them up in the ground. Shechem was the stage of a later power grab. The son of Gideon, Abimelech, attempted to rule from Shechem, but failed. He destroyed the city and burned the leaders alive in a temple fortress dedicated to Baal. This is the Shechem that witnessed the splitting of Israel into two kingdoms, recorded in 1 Kings 12. It enjoyed the title and renovations of a capital city for a short time. Today, archaeologists have made some stunning discoveries at ancient Shechem. They have found evidence of destruction throughout the city and a very large fortress temple. There is also evidence of it being a strongly fortified city as the Bible mentions. Even in ruins, the gate and walls of Shechem are impressive.
It's time to study the superheroes of the Bible as we look at, of course, Judges 9 and 10. Now, it is not the loudness of your life or the publicity of your leadership that gets God's attention. It is the faithfulness of your soul and the depth of your covenant with Him that marks the man of God. Two amazing superheroes of the faith, very few ever hear about, could be classified as the strong and silent type like Jesus was when He was crucified. These two judges teach us very important lessons. These two men kept Israel safe for 53 years. Their names are mentioned in the eternal Word of God for a reason. The first is Tola. His name means a worm that devours plants. The second is a man called Jair, and his name means one who enlightens. After Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he dwelt in Shamir in the mountains of Ephraim. He judged Israel twenty-three years, and he died and was buried in Shamir. After him arose Jer, a Gileadite, and he judged Israel twenty-two years. Now he had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkeys. They also had thirty towns which are called Havoth Jer to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jer died and was buried in Camon. Then the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. From that year they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for eighteen years, all the children of Israel who were on the other side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorites in Gilead. Moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah also, against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have both forsaken our God and served the Baals. So the Lord said to the children of Israel, did I not deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the people of Ammon, and from the Philistines? Also the Sidonians, and Amalekites, and Maonites oppressed you, and you cried out to me, and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me, and served other gods. Therefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry out to the gods which you have chosen, let them deliver you in your time of distress. Judges chapter 10, verses 1 through 14. Thank you for staying with us. Rod Hember here as we go through the Bible in one year. We finally have entered this week into the book called Judges. It is a, it's a, an intensely evil book not because God is evil, but because the Word of God exposes the human nature. Now, the prophet Jeremiah has spoken to us and said, the human heart is desperately wicked who can know it. That's because it's under the gravity of the sin nature. And so every possible thing we see that could go wrong does go wrong in a society. And as a matter of fact, the Bible describes the book of the Judges this way. It was the way and the day in which people did what was right in their own eyes. Everybody did their own thing. It was relativism. Your truth is your truth. My truth is my truth. Your right is your right. My right is my right. And let's just figure out who's going to win. Absolute moral chaos. Now, with that in mind, we move into a very interesting time in the Judges. Let's take a look at the overview. And the overview tells us, 
And I call this the strong and silent type. Uh, there are two judges actually that appear here and they're fascinating. Our reading assignment in the power guide is Judges chapter 9 to 10. And I would encourage you to focus specifically on Judges chapter uh, 10 verses 1 to 14. Now we're not going to get to all of those passages today, but we are going to get to a few. Now the reason I like the book of Judges is because the book of Judges exposes to us a great deal of human nature and what it's about and how to overcome it, what to expect from it and what not to expect from it, and why we need a Savior. If ever there was a book that tells you why we need a Savior, it is the book of Judges. Here is the scripture. Let's look at our first passage we're going to study today. So here's Judges chapter 10, verses 1 through 2. Now this is after uh, Gideon and after Abimelech. So after Abimelech, there arose to save Israel a judge by the name of Tola, and he was the son of Pua, by the way, the son of uh, Dudah, and a man of Issachar. That was a tribe who knew his times. And he dwelt in Shemar in the mountains of Ephraim, and he judged Israel, in fact, for 23 years. And you know, he died and he was buried in Shamir. Now notice here that this guy who gets one mention, he's silent, but he maintained order in a time of great social and moral chaos. Now remember, when we look into heaven, beloved, the very first order of heaven is order. The first thing we see is order. We don't see chaos. There's no chaotic worship in heaven. When the angels sing, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, that's not chaotic and random. Uh, that is actually very well ordered. And so this man was able to bring order to a very morally chaotic society. That brings me to this very important point as we look at it. Great success comes to us when we are faithful to simply show up for God in our families and our friends and our church, to bring order through faithfulness. You see, Tola was faithful to do what God had called him to do. And so, beloved, a big part of order is simply showing up to be a father. Very important. Showing up to be faithful to your church. Faithfulness to your wife brings order to your marriage, brings strength in the covenant. Let's read on in the scripture as we look at Judges 10, 3 to 5. So after him rose a man named Jair. Now he was a Gileadite and he judged Israel for 22 years. And now he had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys. And they also had 30 towns, which were called Havok, Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Keman. Now this is very interesting. Let's go straight to our next point, which is this. Great success continues in our lives when we are faithful to train our children to honor God and His covenants. Notice that this man, Jair, brought his sons and his family into the order of leadership. That is very important. Our sons and our daughters will actually lead the way we do, the way we've trained. Now, I would like you to do a quick examination of yourself in your home and a quick examination of yourself in our society. Are you the one always bickering and complaining and putting down authority and putting down leadership? Now, I want to tell you, then your children are going to do the same thing. And the leadership that you disgrace, your children will disgrace you because you're the authority in the home if you're a father or a mother. Very important. So keep in mind that a big part of continuing in success is respecting, honoring leadership and bringing your family into that respect. Let's go on. So in Judges chapter 10, verse 9, or verse 6 to 9, it says, Then the children of Israel again, they, they did it again. They did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they served the Baals and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, and the gods of the people of Ammon. And these, of course, were the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord. They did not serve Him. So, verse 7, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the people of Ammon. For that year they harassed and oppressed the children of Israel for 18 years, and all the children of Israel who were on the other side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, 
in Gilead. Moreover, the people of Ammon crossed over the Jordan to fight against Judah, also and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. Now, beloved, as we go to the point, I'll show you exactly what we're talking here. The great, there is great failure when we choose to change spiritual authority from God to other gods in our lives. I want to tell you the truth. The truth is we live in a day when it's very popular to worship this, worship that. And by the way, look in the mirror and worship yourself. When we do that, God lets us fall into our own choices. Beloved, come back to Jesus today. program, you and I began to explore some of the cities that are mentioned within the book of Judges. And there are many. Right now, we're going to take a look at another city. It's just as interesting as the first one, perhaps even more because of its very long history. Today, we're going to be looking at a place that was used occasionally as a gathering place of Israel. We're going to be taking a look at the city and history of Mizpah. The city of Mizpah was established as an important site early in the history of Israel. In the time period of the Judges, Mizpah was used as a national rallying point for a man of the Levites who asked for national justice. At the end of the time period of the Judges, recorded in the book of 1 Samuel, the prophet Samuel judged the nation from Mizpah. He also held national gatherings at the city and eventually, Israel's first king, Saul, was presented to the nation at Mizpah. The name Mizpah means watchtower or lookout, and the city was located centrally in the country within the territory of Benjamin. Its importance as an administrative center of sorts is demonstrated not only by its use during the days of the judges and Samuel, but also by its utilization by conquering nations. Years later, when Judah would be taken over by the empire of Babylon, Mizpah would be used by Babylon as an administrative center and would become the city that Governor Gedaliah would attempt to encourage the people from. There have been two archaeological sites considered for the identification of ancient Mizpah. Both are within a 10-mile range from Jerusalem, and both fit well after excavations with the biblical narrative. Tel and Naspa, however, is the site often considered the more likely of the two. It was thoroughly excavated from 1926 to 1935. The overseeing archaeologist excavated over two-thirds of the site, nearly unheard of at that time. He is also still praised for the meticulous records he kept that say for us, descriptions of roads, buildings, potteries, and landscape that may have been seen by Samuel himself. Quick Study and Bible Discovery TV is supported by our Discovery Partners. Discovery Partners are faithful viewers who generously give every month to keep this program alive and on the air. We have a very unique and special offer for you right now. A one-hour Bible Investigators DVD called The Prophets and the Messiah. We explore what prophecy really is according to the Bible and how Jesus Christ was prophesied hundreds of times, hundreds of years before His birth, death, and resurrection. This shocking and compelling video program features Rod, Janice, and Corey Hembry and is yours for a special donation this month of $25 or more. We need your help to continue broadcasting Quick Study each and every day. If you have never responded before, we need you now. Become a Discovery Partner today. When you write or call, ask for the DVD video, The Prophets and the Messiah. Post Office Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. Or Post Office Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W 5G2. In Canada, call 519-940-8338. Or in the U.S., 
Thank you for staying with us, Rod Hember here along with Corey, and we provide opportunity here on the weekend edition of Bible Discovery TV Quick Study to study science, and Ryan the Science Guy helps us to do that. Ryan? Today, a very interesting study. In looking at the many alleged messages from ETs over the years, an interesting pattern has emerged. They always seem to be just out of our grasp. It's almost like a game. Are advanced alien races making regular visits to the Earth? Since science shows that the ability to travel at faster than light speeds within our universe is a physical impossibility, these extraterrestrial visitors, if they indeed are such, must be inhabitants of our own solar system or planets of nearby star systems that would not require several lifetimes of travel to reach the Earth. So far, however, even with all of the amazing technology currently in our possession, we cannot find any signs of intelligent life in our solar system or anywhere. Could it be that these ETs are not all they claim to be? Interestingly, a study of the numerous cases over the years by many UFO investigators has revealed the truth that they are liars. For example, these ETs mostly used to tell their contacts that they were from places like Mercury, Venus, or even Jupiter and its moons. Yet since that time we have developed the technology to explore these places and have found no life at all. Now these alleged ETs mostly claim that they are from more distant places such as the Pleiades or Sirius, places much too far away for us to verify. It seems the ET's claims always remain just slightly out of our grasp. Since then these beings are known liars, why should we believe anything they say? This is strong evidence against the extraterrestrial hypothesis. Furthermore, we have never actually recovered an alien spacecraft or even found undisputed fragments of one, nor have we captured any alien in the act of abduction. In fact, there has not been one single documented encounter of an alien with a human that can be appropriately verified. Additionally, if they are advanced alien races visiting the Earth, then how are we to explain the superphysics of these crafts? The late J. Allen Hynek, a world-famous ufologist, asked in his book, Edge of Reality, If UFOs are indeed somebody else's nuts and bolts hardware, then we must still explain how such tangible hardware can change shape before our eyes, vanish in a Cheshire Cat manner, seemingly melt away in front of us, or apparently materialize mysteriously before us without apparent detection by persons nearby or in neighboring towns. We must wonder too where UFOs are hiding when not manifesting themselves to human eyes. Truly the extraterrestrial hypothesis has some serious problems it must overcome. But not to worry, science fiction to the rescue. Science fiction writers can overcome any real life problem which in our modern world of sci-fi fanatics makes it increasingly difficult to distinguish fantasy from reality. Even Apollo 17 moonwalker Eugene Cernan, in support of the ETH, once stated that there is little difference between science fiction and science fact. That's science fiction today, he says, but give us time. Although the ETH does have some faithful supporters, it also has increasingly been doubted by the most serious of investigators. And although the extraterrestrial hypothesis cannot be 100% disproved, it has many serious struggles. Perhaps then we should seek out a better explanation. Now next weekend we're going to be talking more about the unusual capabilities of UFOs to morph shapes, materialize and dematerialize, and even break apart into multiple pieces or merge together. Well in the meantime, if you'd like more on this, you can take my course online with Bible Discovery Seminary and College. For more info on that, you can call our office or you can contact our Vice President at jasmine at thestreamtv.com. And of course for more information about the Bible Discovery Seminary and College, you can go to Bible Discovery TV. Dot com. All the courses are there. Corey does courses as well. Well, Ryan and Corey, we have Twitter coming in. And a couple of things here on Twitter. First of all, you're getting a lot of positive comments on the Cosmic Mysteries, by the way. But I'll save those for next week. Kathleen says this. She says, I love the questions in the Bible guide because they make me have to dig into the Word to find the answers. That's the point. Mm -hmm. She's talking about the strengthen, and strengthen Your Mind segment, and that's actually in our Power Guides as well. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, Kathleen also says, Corey is amazing. I am grateful to learn so much for her. I often ask questions. I ask God, but usually Corey addresses it before I get God's answer. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> hey, I can be used as a tool to help, yes, okay? That, that's the goal is but, to help. But uh, the Bible archaeology is uh, a lot of fun. 
And you and I both have a great love for studying history. So does Ryan. Yes. And so we are having a good time. Also, uh, Kim says, I love your show. It's very insightful. Thank you for filling my spirit with God's word off our Twitter. Now, if you would like to make comments on Twitter, and I'll read them right here. We're going to have the pictures and the images because Rachel Reddy, our new producer of the Twitter segment, is actually going to be putting those together for you in the future. Then make sure you go to our website at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. There are times in our lives when God is silent because we have silenced Him. When ancient Israel chose to ignore God's Word and induct more exciting and entertaining gods from the Amorites, the Philistines, Baal, Sidon, Syria, Moab, the rude sexual orgies of the worship of Ashtoreth, God stopped talking and protecting. There are times when our Lord teaches us by letting us live with the devastating consequences of our own sin. This is a good thing. It is the discipline of the Holy Spirit. And there is great strength for life in confession and true repentance. So with that we pray, Lord, teach me to be faithful to you and your word and forgive me for ignoring it. In our Strengthen Your Mind segment today, we've got a great question for you. Where does the Bible say that though you, the church, have a reputation of being alive, you are dead? Wow, strong words. I will give you this much. It is not in the Tanakh or the Old Testament of the Bible. It is a very mysterious book in which that is in. And if you think you know the answer to that question, go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com where we've prepared the answers for you there and click on Strengthen Your Mind or get on our mailing list. We send the answers out to help strengthen your mind. You see, it's not about religion and doing good works that gets you into heaven and makes you alive with Christ. It's about coming to Jesus and recognizing you're a sinner. I'm a sinner as well. And we are saved by the grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It's not by our good works or our do good attitudes or anything else. It is not by religion, but it's by relationship with your Lord and Savior. Do you know Jesus today? Come to him today and pray and say, Lord, I want to take you in my life and he'll respond to you. The Quick Study Bible Power Guide is available online right now and waiting for you. If you give online, you can access it immediately. Go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on the donate button, donate in any amount and access the power guide today.